Hi everyone, this is Francisco and I just looked up Newton's Cradle and technically what it is is like four or six balls, metal balls, and once you lift one and you drop it, you let go of it, it hits the other balls, and it causes the last one to bounce up, it hits, this one bounces up, and it hits, so I was thinking about generating electricity, um, and I thought that it would be interesting to, so it's called Newton's Cradle, and I was thinking about maybe making these balls out of, um, I don't know, uh, maybe even, uh, copper. I don't know if they will work as effectively as metal or steel or whatever. Um, but then having some magnets... Um, and somehow, um, causing it to work as a miniature, uh, generator, um, even if, even if there is a, Even if the iron balls are kept the way that they are and something is welded, uh, an iron rod from the last ends of the balls, um, but obviously it will be flipped, uh, inverted, it will be inverted. So on one side, it will have uh, the rod sticking upwards, um, so that the magnet can be attached to it, or something non-magnetic magnetic right so technically the magnet will be at the tip of it and with technology a timer sequence timer it will be able to pick the ball up and drop it And it will produce more electricity. Than is required to. To uh, kickstart it. Um, and if it works then. Um, technically we can build many. Uh, duplicates. And have them running all day long. <sighs> um, but that's only if, if this idea will work. Um, 
it's called it's pretty much like the wind belt generator someone out there created a new form of generating electricity and it's basically like the same type of material that that's required for cassette players or DVD players. Uh, I mean, I mean DVR players, uh, recording, um, you know, cassettes. Without film, is very flimsy and flexible. So, the creator of the wind belt. Um, use that type of material and that person attached two magnets one on one side one on the other side obviously they got stuck together you have the north and the south and then on top of that you have the coils and in the bottom you have the coils and it just goes up and down as the wind hits the belt it goes up and down. So the same is true on the opposite side. It has the same type of setup. Um, and technically, uh, you could leave it outside or test it outside. And this person did. Uh, they could be just about anywhere. But you guys can look it up. It's called the um, Wind Belt Generator. So, technically, um, is that type of um, concept. But remembering that, you know, somehow, you know, the, one of the balls will be able to the machine will be able to pick it up, release it, until it pretty much dies out, or the machine senses that it's not generating any more electricity. So therefore, it will either stop the ball, re-grab it, bring it up again, and release it. And, um, I mean, that doesn't, that will, that won't require a lot of electricity, uh, to do something like that. Um, so, I'm thinking that, um, it can be converted into a generator. Um, obviously, playing around with, um, you know, uh, science and the laws of science. I don't know if it's the laws of physics, because I really don't know. Um, but just getting it right and testing it out. Um, and if it works, <clears throat> like I said, um, they can be mass produced. And I've seen some. Obviously, there's two strings. And it goes down, it goes into the ball bearing, or the steel ball. The ball has a hole through it. So the string goes through it, and then it gets connected to the top. Um, so the, the strings are separated. And the ball is down here. So it's... 
basically you lift it up, you drop it, or you let go of it, it hits other balls, ding, 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 and then the last one goes up, and it just keeps doing that um, motion, um, So, in other words, the magnet will always go to the same location at all times, the same spot, the sweet spot. Through the coils, and pretty much it will act like the Faraday flashlight when you shake the magnet back and forth. Um... As the ball goes up, the magnet will go through the winding coils, you know, like a, a tube of it, a tube of it, a tube of coils that the magnet will pass into, then out, and the same will be true for the other side. So something like that. Um, and also remembering, because I'm trying to think this through because it keeps going through my mind. So I'm kind of like designing it and creating it as I talk about it. Uh, out loud and as I think right now so the ball the steel ball will most likely not go into the copper windings it will just barely um It will barely like enter, but not all the way through. Maybe just a little bit. But the extension where the magnet is, that will go through. So creating it um, like that, I'm assuming. Um. And I don't know if the magnet will slow it down or create drag. Um, but you guys can also probably picture it instantly with the extension pointing downwards so that When the ball bearing goes up, there will be the same motion, pretty much like a 90 degree motion um, from the tip of my finger. That's where it will hit the other balls. The other balls are over here. And... It'll go up and it'll go down. And it will always be in the same location. Um, so this will be a fixed unit. Uh, machine generator um, and obviously at the very bottom of pretty much the track or just the um, 
where the magnet will basically hover pretty much over the copper windings um it will create um positive ions or electrolytes um you know to be created and to flow to therefore produce electricity um and you know if 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 it operates and functions because i don't know if it's going to create drag but if if it, if it function operates the same way and it runs for a while then it could be scaled up for more commercial type of um applications um and who knows uh we might be able to experiment with uh, different designs um, like I could instantly picture like a cone shaped head so that will be like the hammer similar to a weapon it has the the hammer uh, that pierces uh, the shell um, which then you know sets off the the TNT and the bullet goes flying through the chamber of a weapon. So therefore, uh, the hammer, um, cone-shaped head. I don't know. I don't know if it's required, but I'm thinking the sharper that we can get it, um, and obviously we would have to test it. Because if it's, if it's super sharp, then it's obviously going to, you know, uh, smash the, the sharpness of it. But we don't want it to be super sharp where it's going to do that. We want it to be just perfect where... Where if we did do it sharp and we evaluated where it stopped and we could um, make a duplicate with a machine, um, obviously, I think that it will uh, work much longer. Even, even, um, without this generator idea in mind, just for the, the machine by itself, uh, mainly because I understand the, you know, the power of magnets. Uh, and I experimented with magnets. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, so technically, um, so technically,
anything that's like sharp there the the magnetic the magnetic field is increased i don't know about how much how many how much percent but i'll be confident to say at least by 10 percent um so keeping that in mind when you know creating uh, or recreating something like this uh, especially you know if it works then it can be implemented on the generator um, machine just so I could run longer um, and of course you guys understand the insulator the non -ma non magnetic uh, piece so that can easily be done um, by drilling into the, you know, either ends of the of the balls from the different opposite directions or opposite sides. I mean, and then a spacer. That's non-conductive. Basically, it's not really an insulate insulator. Um, but it will basically uh, not affect uh, the motion of the. <clears throat> Of the movements of the balls. And it won't stop it. Because if it's iron. And it's ma magnetic. Then obviously. You know. The magnet will cause. The, the whole process. The whole thing to stop. And. You know. That wouldn't be good. <sighs> obviously. Because we want the machine to to operate with little to no uh, energy but if the generator is producing more than is required to operate it to start it so at the end of the day we have you know negative 20 um, but the machine produced, you know, a hundred, um, volts, um, then you will subtract the 20 from the hundred, which will equal to 80, um, <clears throat> as an example but I really don't know those numbers because I don't have uh, the money and the tools to experiment with all that but if any of you out there uh, think this will be a cool little experiment um then you know knock yourself out um try it out and you know good luck um but yeah like i think that it could work i mean obviously we can all test it but I don't know if, if it will be reliable or um, worth putting all the time and energy into something like this, like a project, especially 
if more units would have to be produced and connected together. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have. And um, you know, if it works, then I could probably create newer designs. Um, to cause it to uh, work or last longer. Um, by pretty much messing around with the elevation of the strings. Um, I'm thinking on the The, the the opposite ends of the balls um, and not uh, altering the other uh, four balls in between those assuming there's six so That way, we will be able to crank it up further up, but it will still hit the other balls, and the other ball will go up further up as well, like the same type of thing, but it will go higher. Mainly because of the string. Um, so we can redesign it. If it works. Um, we can think about other things. Other possibilities. Um, you know. And just research and development. And. Um. And then cost effectiveness. Um, reducing uh, production costs. And I can already see possibly. Um, uh, of course, it would require more testing and experimenting. Um, but for the most part, if I'm correct, then, you know, we'll be able to Um, use less material compared to the competition if any because they're going to be looking at it from just one angle one point of view while we look at it from you know hundreds and thousands of different ways if we really sit down and think about it um, but like I said I don't have the time or the money uh, because I I also have other ideas so you know if it works then that's great you know we can perfect it and then we could even um, move on and and try uh, different approaches that I believe 
will most likely be better than that. But, um, I'm still thinking about it. Um, you know, this other concept that I have. Uh, mainly because, you know, I, I understand the situation. Uh, the seriousness that you people out there, you know, take others' information, other people's information. Um, so I would prefer to, you know, come out with it, um, you know, full swing. No bullshit. And. Like even right now I thought about. Um, you know because I was thinking about it. From. From a, a small. Well, no, it wasn't even up to scale, uh, but the quantity of magnets on this new generator that, that I've been thinking about will be increased. And if they're increased, then I'm assuming that it will trigger the the copper coils uh, much more cause therefore causing possibly um, causing more produced electricity from that. Um, and it's better than a windmill. There's no resistance whatsoever. There is no ball bearings whatsoever. Um, 